Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da habta fillah Regarding the hadith we mentioned About stagnant water And some of the ahkam uh, surrounding it I want to relate the hadith in Arabic And go over some of the fawaid of some of the ulama So that we have a good understanding of this hadith and we can practice it in our lives. So in the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, an Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, la yabulanna ahadakum fil maya daim aladhi la yajri thumma yagtasil bi, thumma yagtasil min. Wali Muslim la yagtasil ahadakum fil maya daim wa huwa junub. So in the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu that was in Sahih al-Bukhari, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, one of you should not urinate in water, in stagnant water, which does not move. Then, yaghtasil minhu, taking a bath from it. And in the narration in Muslim, لا يغتسل أحدكم في الماء دائم وهو جنوب. One of you should not take a wash himself from stagnant water, and he is junub. In these hadith, we learn the reason for this is in order not, of course, by urinating, and first and even uh, more so. Uh, by defecating in stagnant water, of course, it is the spread of, of, of filth. And from filth comes all other, uh, comes sickness and, and so forth. So these are prohibited things. And if you travel, you'll find in many, uh, especially in, in, in poor countries, in many so-called third world countries, you'll find the people bathing in water, which is sometimes stagnant, and the children playing in it, or, and sometimes it's running, but from all the filth and all the nudges in it, it has changed in its smell, it's changed in its color, and it is just a, a river of, filled with najasa and, and sickness and germs and bacteria and all the other ailments that come from it. So the divine hikmah that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, has given us is to show us that it's not permissible for us to urinate or defecate in stagnant water. Because stagnant water, as the Prophet وسلم, said, he said, uh, So the Prophet وسلم, said, Do not, one of you should not urinate in stagnant water. And then he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, explained for us what he means by stagnant water. He said, Alladhi la yajri, that which does not move. So this is water, unlike a river, a river, river water, of course it's moving. Uh, the sea, you know, it's moving in the waves and so forth. But if you come to a pond or a lake or even a smaller man-made uh, uh, contraption for, for water, for holding water, water tanks and so forth, of course the water is not moving. And so then the nudges doesn't have a chance to disperse and, and kind of dissipate. But instead, it becomes more a part of, uh, saturates the liquid or becomes with it and, and spreads the, the najasa and the sickness. And in the narration in Muslim, So one of you should not bathe in stagnant water and he is, uh, and he is uh, with sexual impurities. For example, the one who you know, has uh, for the man, the man or the woman who has had an orgasm, then they are junub. Or they have had sexual relations, then they are junub, even regardless of whether they had orgasm or not at Karamakum Allah. One of the things we learn about this hadith, we see the fuqaha, they have ikhtilaf regarding whether this is nahi li tahrim or nahi li uh, Kiraha. So the Hanabila, 
the scholars of the Henbali fiqh and the Vahiriya, the scholars of like uh, Imam uh, of the Vahiri and Ibn Hazm, that of the Vahiriya school that tend to be more literal, they take this hadith, this prohibition, as a, pure, a strict prohibition that it is haram. Whereas you have the uh, some of the uh, the, the Malikiyah, they say that it is makru, it is disliked to do this. And some of the ulama, they say that it is muharram, that it becomes haram regarding if it is a, a small container of water. So if it's a larger body of water, like a pond or something, then it would not be haram because it would be difficult, of course, in a big body of water if you just urinate and but if a lot of people are urinating, of course, that changes the circumstances. But they say if it is a small amount, and the small amount will be dunna kulletain, less than these big pots of water, then it does not uh, make it nudges. But regardless from this, what we do learn, regardless of what coal that you take, is that you should avoid urinating and defecating in bodies of water, period. What we gain from this hadith, one of the things we gain from this hadith is that it is impermissible to make a ghusl from stagnant water by diving in it, especially if one is junub. And the Shaykh says, even if no one, uh, you didn't, uh, someone did not urinate in it that you sh should not do this. And this is in, in, in accordance with the ruwaya in Mus uh, Sahih Muslim. But he said instead, this is for the ritual of purity, it's not talking about swimming or something like this. But instead, that if one comes to a stagnant body of water, instead of diving in it for ghusl, that they should tanawul min, as he says, that they should take the water from it and use it to wash themselves without going in the water and uh, immersing themselves in to, to remove the impurities. Another benefit of this hadith is it shows us that uh, it is pro, uh, pro, the prohibition for anything which has to do with harm and najasa. Another benefit of this hadith is it shows us that we should avoid the mustakhbath, those things which are filthy and filthy practices. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.